Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. The National Weather Service. And good Thursday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on the 6th of February. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with the very latest weather happenings around your part of Alaska. You can do that very easily by going online to weather.gov slash Alaska, or as you've got probably a bookmark on your computer, arh.noaa.gov. We'll get you there as well. Uh, the weather info line is open at 800-472-0391. Find each weather service office around the country and in Alaska on Twitter under NWS Anchorage, NWS Fairbanks, or NWS Juno locally. And, of course, on Facebook, U.S. National Weather Service Alaska, and on YouTube in the afternoon. You'll get your daily map briefing uh, from our NWS Anchorage channel. And then following this broadcast, a little bit later in the evening, you'll get the entire Alaska Weather Show brought to you by our broadcast partner, alaskapublic.org. You can see that broadcast right there uh, taped on the uh, side of the screen. Or if you like to go to YouTube, you can find their channel there by using the search tool AKWX TV. You can find uh, all of the broadcasts there. Go back and well, watch five or six of them if you like. Uh, here's what's going on around our region tonight. In the southeast, things are relatively quiet, a little bit breezy, but no active weather really that requires a, a warning, watch, or advisory. Across south central Alaska, those things are changing. And on each side of Kenai Peninsula, we have a number of different types of warnings. Uh, first, we'll start in the Matanuska Valley. As you've probably heard, let's talk about a couple times in the last several nights now. The winds are coming. We expect the winds to start to pick up later on tonight and overnight especially. A high wind warning is in effect there. We're expecting gusts to reach upwards of 70 to 80 miles per hour, perhaps, during their peak as we get into early Friday morning. So a high wind warning in effect there. A little bit further down the Kenai Peninsula, we do not have anything in effect for Anchorage. A little bit farther down into the western parts of the Kenai Peninsula, a red flag warning is posted there. That is a, a fire weather uh, type of alert. That means low humidity and a rapid fire growth and spread is possible. This is also due to the wind and the low snow cover. You put all those things combined. Uh, again, you might not normally expect to see this in uh, early February, but it is the case this time around. So fire danger also high in the Matanuska Valley and across the western parts of the Kenai Peninsula. Now for the eastern parts of the Kenai Peninsula and western Prince William Sound, especially south of Moose Pass and including the Seward area, blizzard warning in effect now as we get into the early morning hours tomorrow and into Friday. Uh, we are expecting a, a good amount of snow, perhaps a 3 to 8 inches, I believe, uh, perhaps up to 13 in some areas around Seward, plus winds around uh, north uh, to 20 to 40 miles per hour. That's going to reduce visibility and also make travel a little bit tricky there, especially south of Moose Pass again into Seward. So blizzard warning in effect there. Uh, most other areas may see snow and may see wind, but probably not as uh, bad as what you may experience around Seward up toward Moose Pass. A little bit farther out to the west uh, for Kodiak Island, uh, we are expecting a winter weather advisory uh, to, uh, uh, to occur there with uh, snow probably upwards of 3 to 8 inches there, maybe 5 to 8 in some areas. Uh, also looking at some gusty northerly winds. As that occurs, you'll probably approach blizzard conditions in some places, but probably not going to meet that uh, criteria. So we're expecting that to stay around 3 to 8 inches of snow and northerly winds to pick up, but perhaps not quite as bad as what you would expect in a blizzard. Let's travel a little bit further northward in a large area in the interior from Arctic Village to Bettles, Tananaw, Northway, including the Tananaw Valley, mainly north of Fairbanks there in the higher terrain. Uh, winter weather advisory for you, mainly for blowing and drifting snow there. Winds will also be strong at times over the passes and summits, and because of that, visibility may drop down. Not expecting a great deal of accumulation. A few places across uh, the eastern uh, interior in the upper Yukon Valley may see a couple inches of snow. 
The bulk of the snow will likely be left across parts of the north and eastern Brooks Range summits and the north slope there. And in those places, you might see several inches of snow. Uh, blizzard warning continues around Kaktovik for strong and gusty winds coming in from the west, reducing visibility around Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse as well. Uh, the winter weather advisory for the Barrow area has been canceled, but we're still seeing winter weather advisory conditions there from Wainwright down toward Point Hope. So that's uh, kind of a look at what's going on right now around Alaska, mainly due to a pretty decent surge of colder air dropping southward. We don't have anything out across southwestern Alaska or the Aleutians at this point. However, many areas around the Gulf are looking at storm force winds as we get into Friday and gales if you're not under storm force conditions and heavy freezing spray and that it does include Cook Inlet. So if you've got plans to be out on the water, whether it's out across Kuskokwim Bay, uh, Bristol Bay and southward, or around uh, the Shelikoff Strait region up to Cook Inlet and in Prince William Sound in the north and western Gulf, you really need to check up on your marine weather conditions. We'll have that forecast for you here in just a minute. And once again, tomorrow's not going to be the nicest day up in now Cook Inlet or the western Kenai Peninsula or the Matanuska or Susitna Valley for that matter, but especially the Matanuska Valley. Uh, it will be rather breezy, so again, you are encouraged to be fire wise and be safe if you are doing anything with open flame outside tomorrow. Here's a look at the Bering Sea satellite picture right now, and a couple things to note is we've been talking about this pattern for a little while. We've got this upside down shaped U pattern in the jet stream. The jet stream, of course, is that fast moving river of air that steers all the weather around the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, if you're looking at that end, but we are looking at our end. And uh, underneath that, at the surface, uh, all the storms and high pressure systems are all controlled by this fast moving river of air. Well, right now, that current is stretching out of the Kamchatka Peninsula, uh, moving into northwestern Alaska, and then taking a dive pretty much north to south, right over the heart of Alaska and into south central Alaska. Underneath that, we have high pressure developing here across the western parts of the Bering Sea. Things are pretty stable there. There's areas of fog here and there, but overall, the air is moving off the continent and into the Bering Sea. So we are grabbing a lot of that cold air across the north and then dropping that, pushing it down across uh, the interior of Alaska, the north slope, bringing out snow there, uh, pushing cold and wind across the interior. And we're forcing some of that cold through the valleys like the Matanuska Valley as we get into tonight and tomorrow uh, with that forcing of the jet stream in the upper atmosphere. So it's all connected there, but the jet stream is one of the main drivers of weather systems around the planet. So as you look at the satellite picture here, you can see the cloud development that's uh, been moving over the interior and across the north slope this afternoon. You can see the clouds stretching back out into the northern parts of the Gulf. Southeast still looking pretty clear and nice, but clouds will gradually encroach into places like Sitka, perhaps north and west toward Gustavus and out toward Yakutat. By the end of the weekend, Yakutat's looking at some more rain and snow. And clouds will eventually fill in across the north and western Gulf Coast. And winds are going to pick up across uh, the Kuskokwim Bay area, Bristol Bay, and out across the Bering Sea, including the Pribilovs there. One more look at the satellite picture here, and you can see that uh, we've got a pretty decent rotation here. That uh, clockwise flow all wrapping around high pressure that's sitting up across the Chukchi Sea and it's cold and it's a pattern that looks like it's going to stay in place as we go through the weekend and probably at least to the early to mid part of next week at that. So if we're dealing with wind tonight, the overall setup for wind uh, will probably ebb and flow somewhat as we go through the next five or six days. Uh, but we will continue to see that general pattern that will make that possible if we have more disturbances caught up in that and passing over south central or southwestern Alaska and driving that cold into the interior and creating some snow across the Brooks Range. So there's definitely more on the way. Here's a look at today's weather map and you can see the cold front working its way through the interior. Low pressure working across the Beaufort Sea Coast here at 1016 millibars. Pockets of snow were breaking out along that frontal boundary. Some of that working over Fairbanks earlier today. Uh, we had some snow showers as far west as McGrath and that was working down over uh, Denali National Park and southward into the Susitna Valley. Uh, late this afternoon, Talkeetna was reporting snow and snow was working over the Anchorage area in the Matanuska Susitna Valleys earlier this afternoon. It really didn't look like it was much to write home about it all and most of it was just flurries and a little bit of a breeze but uh, nothing too serious as of yet. Out across the Yukon, 1,037 millibar high there, trying to feed in more cold air ahead of the system and snow and blowing snow across the Arctic coast with a 1,054 millibar high out across the Chukchi Sea. The west and most of the Aleutians, southwest, things were pretty quiet and relatively calm for this point. Tonight's forecast shows snow possible in many areas across the interior. Now, a lot of this is going to be uh, more blow than snow. We're not really expecting a great deal of accumulations in a great many places, even though uh, the blue shade is painted all over the map. 
Uh, the north slope will be looking at uh, more wind than anything else. And again, the north and eastern Brooks Range probably dealing with some accumulating snow. Snow will be possible across the Alaska Range, but once you get south of that, the snow line really drops off and we're dealing with a lot more wind working into the backside of low pressure. Snow will be possible in Kodiak Island and across the western Prince William Sound region. And then things really dry out for the west coast in the YK, YK Delta. Uh, the Seward Peninsula also looking at some light snow possibilities and rain and fog out across the central and western Aleutians. And for southeast, well, there's Friday and you can see some of that precipitation is trying to sneak into a very dry air mass across the panhandle there. Rain and snow may be possible around the Yakutat region and the Icy Cape westward in the Cordova on places like Valdez and Western Prince William Sound. And we've got this funny little S here with a line painted through that. If you ever see that on a weather map, that means blowing dust and perhaps a poor visibility as a result of that. If you're in the Matanuska and Susitna Valley region, as well as Anchorage, Eagle River, you've probably heard and maybe even noticed right now the air quality is not so great because of the dry air and the dust and the silt blowing around. Well, that's what that symbol means there. The air quality tomorrow and the blowing dust and silt might be an issue for you. Snow showers will continue across the Yukon border there and into Alaska, into the upper Yukon, and perhaps into the uh, uh, areas around Northway and northward toward Eagle. For the North Slope, uh, snow will continue with areas of blowing and drifting snow as high pressure drops a little bit closer to Wainwright and up around Barrow. You'll notice the frontal boundary is parked very close to the eastern side of Siberia and is working across the Aleutians there. All this cold and dry air, once it moves over the lower and mid Yukon and off the coast of western Alaska will be very dry, so probably going to see a partly to mostly sunny kind of day around the Pribilofs. It will be cold, it will be windy, but it does not look to be terribly wet at this point. Looking at Saturday, a wave of low pressure will work into northern parts of southeast. That should keep a lot of the snow across the Copper River Basin, parts of western Prince William Sound and Prince William Sound itself uh, toward Valdez and into the Copper River Basin, still looking at some opportunities for light snow. We may see some more flurries around south central Alaska, but by and large, the bulk of the precipitation and the frontal boundary should be well to our south at this point. That will keep an opportunity for rain and snow across the Alaska Peninsula, Dutch Harbor and Alaska looking for periods of rain and snow, but most of the YK, Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula will be dry, but breezy and high pressure up across the North Slope will try and shut down the snow machine across the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. You'll still see some pockets of snow a little bit farther north of Wainwright and Barrow. And the front moving through the Bering Sea will begin to die out as high pressure tries to squash any more movement of that colder air. And that leading edge of that colder air will become kind of mixed up with everything else going on out around the Bering Sea. Southeast by and large remains dry as we go into the first part of the weekend. Temperatures today mainly in the 20s and 30s. Uh, most areas in southeast were fairly cool. Uh, around Prince William Sound, 20s and 30s for you, about uh, 23 there around Matanuska and uh, the Matanuska Valley, including Palmer this afternoon, 33 around Homer and Seward. Prince William Sound saw temps in the 20s and 30s, as I said. It was snowing in Talkeetna late this afternoon with a temperature of around 7, 21 in Fairbanks, 5 around Eagle, uh, Fort Yukon looking at 4 below late today, 0 in Anaktuvik Pass. We saw single digits uh, for most of the Arctic coast, and as a result of that wind, temperatures will not be terribly cold tomorrow around Nome. A late afternoon temperature of 26, St. Lawrence Island 25, southwestern Alaska mainly in the upper 20s this afternoon, with Hooper Bay showing 25, McGrath 29, 29 in Bethel as well, and 28 in Nunavak Island. For southwest Alaska, uh, we're looking at uh, temps mainly above freezing for King Salmon and Dillingham, a 36 degree uh, temperature around 4 o'clock for Dillingham, uh, lower 40s as you get out toward uh, uh, Chignik and around Sandpoint at 43 degrees. Dutch Harbor on Alaska at 39, over the 40 degree mark for Adak and Atka, and just under that mark there for Shemu today. Overnight low temperatures in the interior will be cool, not as cool as they would be though if we had a clear sky and no wind. Look for most areas there anywhere from 5 to 10 below. Once you get up toward Arctic Village though, it could be as cold as 23 below, 6 below in Barrow. Nome looking at a low of uh, 8 above. Teens for Bristol Bay, 20s and 30s for the Alaska Peninsula, 33 in Dutch Harbor and Alaska, southeast. Teens and 20s until you get out around Sitka, and those overnight lows will be a little bit closer to 30. Prince William Sound, teens and 20s, and about 13 there around Anchorage and the Matsu Valley, 29 in Kodiak with a high tomorrow of only 32. And you can see the cold dropping down. Most areas will be well below the freezing point, and in some cases north of Fairbanks, that will be well below zero. Five below in Barrow, 15 above in Nome. Southwest looking at teens and 20s there. Uh, you don't get into the 30s until you get past Sand Point out toward Cold Bay and Falls Pass, 35 in Alaska. About 40 or so for the Aleutians, so no big change there. 29 in the Pribilofs, and low to mid 30s there for a large part of southeast. Valdez looking at 21. 
flying weather. Then we expect turbulence issues, of course, but also some visibility restrictions as you get into Prince William Sound and the western side of that, of course. IFR is expected there. The same goes for the north slope, mainly east of Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, and also along the north and eastern side of the Alaska Range up toward Northway, Toke, and probably south of Eagle. Here's your uh, pass conditions then. Anaktuvik and Attigan Pass, both expected to be IFR as we go through the day. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass will see some improvements after this uh, storm wave passes over. We expect to be at VFR by the end of the day in Rainy Pass, and for Windy Pass, improvements are expected there. We'll start out at IFR and Isabel Pass, but lean over toward MVFR conditions as the day goes on. Isabel Pass should be instrument flight rule. Tanita Pass, MVFR conditions there. Porters Pass, as you would expect. IFR, probably socked and locked there. And Chilkoot and White Pass, VFR conditions should be expected there in the northern parts of southeast. Not much has changed on the freezing level map there as we looked at it from yesterday and today. The surface freezing line pretty much in the same place, so it may have dropped just south of Kodiak Island. You can see some overrunning taking shape out here across the western Bering Sea, but by and large, most of mainland Alaska is sub-freezing at this point in the morning. Icing potential above 2,000 and below 8,000 feet for parts of Prince William Sound. This will be ahead of that area of low pressure there, and we'll also have a pocket of uh, icing potential mainly across Bristol Bay in the extreme western and northern sections of the Alaska Peninsula. Most of that should be light to isolated moderate. The jet stream shows that upside down uh, U-shaped pattern or that omega pattern as we see across the western Bering Sea. This is grabbing onto that really big pocket of cold air, that polar vortex that's always northward and affects Alaska. Well, it's grabbed another chunk of that coal and dropping that southward and pushing it into a large part of Alaska today. As we get into the next couple days, a very fast and west to easterly flow will take over the lower 48, so we'll have a lot of active weather as well. 9,000 feet, a northerly flow can be seen there with wind speeds anywhere from 40 to 65 knots across the west. Expect turbulence issues at this level, especially along the Cook Inlet and westward. High pressure keeps things calm across southeast, and a northerly onshore flow across the Arctic coast between 30 and 40 knots will also provide a bumpy ride there at 3,000 feet. A northerly flow across the Kaktovik region around 25 knots, zipping up to 70 knots across the YK Delta. Low pressure south and west of Kodiak will drive more of a southerly flow into South Central Alaska and northerly is also to be expected across the Bering Sea coast and into the Aleutians. Turbulence will be pretty widespread probably tomorrow, at least occasional moderate across uh, the mid Yukon Valley all the way to the coastline and across the YK Delta, Cook Inlet looking at the potential for isolated severe and same goes for areas downwind of the Alaska Range and probably along the Kuskokwim River. Uh, look for isolated moderate across the Gulf and below 4,000 feet, at least some chop there across the central and eastern parts of the Aleutians. That's a look at your aviation forecast. We'll be back in just a few minutes after Stargazers. Happy birthday, Galileo! Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Fellow stargazer Marlene Hidalgo will join us to help you find your way around the sky. We're so nerdy here at Stargazers that we have favorite astronomers. Speak for yourself. I'm not that, uh, okay, who am I kidding? I am that nerdy, too. And our most favorite astronomer has a birthday coming up. Galileo Galilei, telescope pioneer, prover of the heliocentric system, observer of the mountains of the moon, sunspots, phases of Venus, moons of Jupiter, and ears of Saturn. Ears? Yeah, we'll get to that later. Anyway, Galileo would be 450 years old this year. And we want to show you how you can recreate his observations from your own backyard. Let's show you. Galileo was born February 15, 1564 in Pisa, Italy. The night he was born, the planet Venus was visible just after sunset in the west with a crescent moon up above it. Over in the east, the planets Jupiter and Saturn were making a nice little conjunction. Galileo would grow up to study these four objects extensively with his homemade telescopes. Galileo didn't invent the telescope, but legend has it that an assistant merely told him what one looked like and Galileo built one himself in under 24 hours. Okay. We now have our sky set up for this February 10th at 8 p.m., looking high in the southeast. We'll be having our own little conjunction of the waxing gibbous moon with the bright planet Jupiter. Imagine being one of the first people to ever look through a telescope. 
you would see wonders no human eye had ever seen. When Galileo looked through his telescope at the moon, he saw something like this. He remarked, it is like the face of the earth itself, which is marked here and there with chains of mountains and depths of valleys. When he looked at Jupiter up close, he saw something completely unexpected. Four stars always seemed to hang around it in a line. On certain days, there would be one on one side and three on the other. Sometimes they were split two and two, and other times there were four on the same side. Galileo figured out these were moons that orbited the giant planet. After watching them for one season, he even computed their orbits. Io goes around Jupiter every 42 hours. Europa circles around every three and a half days. Ganymede takes a little over seven days, and Callisto orbits once in a little under 17 days. Now we've switched the sky a bit. We're facing southeast just before sunrise. It's about 6 a.m., and we're looking for Venus. She's easy to find since she's the brightest star-like object in the sky. Galileo's observations of Venus proved Copernicus right. When he looked at Venus through his telescope, he saw that it wasn't a perfect circle. It had phases like the moon. And as he watched it month after month, the phases changed. Not only that, but when Venus was a crescent, it was larger than when it was almost full. Aha! This was proof that Venus went around the Sun, not around the Earth. It got larger and more crescent-shaped when it was closer to us and almost between us and the Sun. And it was fuller and smaller when on the opposite side of the Sun. Saturn is also up at 6 a.m. this February. It's about halfway up in the southern sky looking like a bright yellow star. It'll make a nice triangle with the fainter stars Zubinel Shamali and Zubinel Janubi. Galileo's telescope wasn't quite good enough to see Saturn clearly. As he squinted and squinted, he did notice something strange in the image. He wrote, Saturn has ears. What he was seeing, just barely, were Saturn's rings. To him, they looked like ears sticking out of Saturn's face. It wasn't until 50 years later that astronomers had good enough telescopes to say for certain, yep, Saturn has rings around it. So, in honor of Galileo's 450th birthday, we have Jupiter in the evening sky, and Venus and Saturn just before dawn. And if you have a telescope, aim at these four objects and pretend you're Galileo, seeing the wonders of the universe for the first time. Keep, Keep looking up. Time for a look at your marine forecast in southeast. We'll continue that east and southeasterly flow running up the coast with higher gusts there, especially around the northern entrances, Gustavus up toward Yakutat. 20 to 25 knots with a 5 to 8 foot sea growing there. Northerlies coming out of Haines and Skagway. There will be freezing spray concerns there, so watch that. A 20 knot flow with a 4 foot sea and north and easterly winds around 10 to 15 knots in the southern channels with 3 foot seas expected there. On Friday, a little bit of a shift. The winds pick up on the inside 15 to 30 knots now. So we'll still be watching for freezing spray issues. Six foot seas are expected in the north and an offshore flow from Craig all the way up to Yakutat between 15 and 20 knots with the highest seas around Yakutat and Gustavus around seven feet, five foot seas down in the south and the southern entrances. Here's a look at south central. What a mess tomorrow. A northerly flow running down Cook Inlet, 40 to 60 knots possible there. So storm force winds uh, possible, especially as you get out toward the Barren Islands and east of the Barren Islands into the Gulf. 50 knot winds there with higher gusts expected. 14 to 16 foot seas inside Prince William Sound, a northeasterly flow, 35 knots with a nine foot sea easterlies outside of Prince William Sound. Also storm force winds there, 15 foot seas. Uh, Shelikoff Strait also dealing with a pretty good punch from the north and east, 13 foot seas expected, and again higher gusts in most areas. Saturday, winds diminish rapidly, especially by Friday night and into Saturday. We'll still have some stronger winds running down the Cook Inlet with 3 to 7, even 11 foot seas as you get out toward the Barren Islands. 30 knot winds there from the north and east through Shelikoff Strait, but all the winds across the western Gulf and inside Prince William Sound are diminishing. Seas should be smaller as well. 9 foot seas outside of Prince William Sound, 14 foot seas east of Kodiak, and 3 to 11 foot seas through most of Cook Inlet and west of the Barren Islands. 
across the Alaska Peninsula. Pretty windy day tomorrow for you as well. A northerly flow, 40 to 45 knots, with higher gusts there. Watching for freezing spray mainly to the north and west. 35 to 40 knots there south of the peninsula with 11 to 13 foot seas in the Pacific. Those become easterly with time on Saturday. A 14 foot sea there west of Kodiak Island. Northeasterlies south of Sand Point and King Cove with a 16 foot sea. Northeasterlies continue in the bearing. Anywhere from 10 to 14 foot seas are expected there. Across the Aleutians, a northerly flow for you uh, following that front. 30 to 45 knots on the north side, about the same on the south side. Seas will be a little bit uh, lower there on the Pacific side initially. 9 to 15 foot seas there on the south and 8 to 20 foot seas north of Nikolsky and Unalaska. An east and southeasterly flow in the western parts of the chain becomes a little more east and northeasterly as we start up the weekend. We'll still keep some stronger winds from the central and eastern parts of the chain. And seas come up to 21 to 24 feet on Saturday in the bearing and 17 to 20 feet on the Pacific side as we start up the weekend. For the West Coast, a northerly push, 30 to 50 knots with the strongest winds around Kuskokwim Bay, 15-foot seas there in the Pribilovs, a northeasterly flow with a 40-knot wind and 14-foot seas. Freezing spray will remain an issue around the St. Matthew Island waters with northerlies between 20 and 35 knots, mainly over the ice edge and north. And then out of Kuskokwim Bay to the Pribilovs, we're looking at winds around 40 to 45 knots with 12 to 19-foot seas to start the weekend. Across the north slope, the windiest day will be tomorrow with north and westerlies from Barrow eastward toward Kaktovik. Again, blizzard warnings and winter weather advisories are covering most of the Arctic coast at this point, so visibility will also be reduced as you get closer to the coastline and probably offshore as well. 35 knots around Kaktovik, but look out in the west, a northerly push running down the Chukchi Sea coast around 25 knots. That diminishes and reverses course on Saturday, a very light southerly flow only at 5 knots. A north and westerly flow from Point Lay to Barrow and out around Prudhoe Bay, Dead Horse and Kaktovik, 20 to 25 knots on Saturday. Recapping tonight's weather, a powerful push of cold air and wind is moving from north to south across Alaska, bringing with it some light snow, heavier snowfall for the Brooks Range, Kodiak Island, and western Prince William Sound. Elsewhere, the snow probably will be less of an issue and the wind will be more of an issue as we get into Friday. The storm south of Kodiak Island keeps a southeasterly flow across south central and the winds continue into the weekend. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder and thanks for watching. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. 